is Teresa and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be me discussing the books that I read during the month of February. I have read a total of eight books, two of which were audiobooks, three were ARCs, and then three were books that I owned. If you guys like seeing this content from me, hit like, subscribe, and comment so you don't ever miss out on a video. I do try to upload twice a week, but I have been trying to take it a little bit easier on myself just because recently I've been feeling like I have been uploading to like fill a quota and just like get an upload out and not really enjoying the content that I put out. Let's start off with the three arcs, all of which are now released. I will have the release dates below the book that you guys are seeing in the thingy here. The first book is Envy Rise by Erica Martin. This is a book written in verse following the historic events of black people in America. I ended up giving this a four to five stars. I did enjoy this, don't get me wrong. It was a very nice like refresher and I also learned a few more things while I was reading this however my biggest thing is and I couldn't really tell if it was just because the kindle formatting I'll say this one if you guys are going to release arcs of poetry like for publishers I get it that like the the arc is like a non-proofed copy but when it comes to things like poetry and verse I need it to be like damn near perfect because just like what messing up like the formatting in the slightest way m will mess up how the reader reads it. So like I said, I gave this a four to five stars. I will be trying to gra I will be grabbing a physical copy of the book sometime soon-ish. I did enjoy it. I like I said, I gave it a four because I, this is like I can't tell genuinely if this was how the book was written or if it was because the Kindle formatting wasn't up to code so to speak, so it was just like a little bit screwy, but I couldn't get into the beat of the poetry until about like, I want to say halfway through the book. So while I was reading it, I couldn't like really get to the flow of it and really get to like into that like headspace of reading something in verse, so I ended up giving it a four. But I really did enjoy it. It's a very poignant way of teaching the, the history of black people in America and even the um, events that may have been glossed over or just not overall taught. So highly recommend it. It should be out now. I believe it came out February 1st. The next arc actually came out, I think, February 22nd, and that is Le League of Liars by Astrid Schulte. This is a YA high fantasy set in a very modern YA setting, or a very modern fantasy setting, where this magic called Edom, I believe is what it's called, is outlawed and is outlawed and is illegal to use, and that they have a prison of this. Now, the main character, whose name I'm forgetting, ends up wanting to become a lawyer and do the and like you know the, do, do the thing and like you know protect people against Edom and the horrors of Edom. As the book progresses we find that he is actually at the heart of everything when when he runs into certain individuals whom are found guilty of using Edom and killing people. I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars. When I saw it on NetGalley, which is where I got the arc from, thank you NetGalley, it was marketed as Six of Crows meets How to Get Away with Murder. Both of those concepts are very vague in the con in in the actual book itself. We didn't get to see the concept of like the Six of Crows heist until maybe like 70% of the way through and it wasn't well pl plotted out at all. It just kind of happened and they were like, okay, this is the plan. And then when the plan went awry, they're like, oh, well, what do we do now? In terms of how to get away with murder, there was nothing of the only how to get away with murder-esque was just the fact that he was a law student and that was about it. I didn't get attached to any of the characters. They seemed, they weren't like, they weren't boring. They were all interesting, but it just wasn't there for me. They just weren't compelling enough for me to get attached to and really enjoy them as characters. On top of that, the pacing was just overall really weird. As I mentioned a couple of seconds ago, most of the exciting part, exciting parts of the plot didn't happen until about 60, 68 to 70% of the book, which is really late in the game for said book. And by then there were so many different plot twists and turns that could have been peppered out throughout the book instead of just dumping everything in these last couple of seconds and it's just like, not even how to get away with murder is pro like planned out like this. Like I understand the, co the, um, the concept of comps, just recently learned that term, the concept of comps in novels and how you can pick up agents and re bring up a readership for that. But I don't think it should be the only thing that books market toward because I have seen a couple of um, comments or reviews when I was writing up my own that they thought it was going to be one thing and it's completely different based off of the comps that it was given. And I just think that like we society need to just drop comps from our marketing strategies. Like they're great for like, you know, stuff like pitch wars, all that stuff, as well as try again, try to get an agent and an editor and like a publishing house. But in terms of the actual marketing itself, I think you lose a lot of potential when you shoehorn yourself into comps because then readers will pick it up and they're like, oh, it's supposed to be like this. And then they read it and they lose out on what should be a good book 
but yeah unfortunately this book was just not it too many pacing issues too many random plot twists and it was just not at all what it was marketed and two out of five stars the last book came out i like last week and i have a physical copy of it because i needed it in my hands and i already did a full length review for that as well so because i will leave that link down below, below for y'all so you guys can check that out it is spoiler free so you get the chance to but that book is all my rage by saba to hear this is a ya contemporary following an almost dual timeline, the first one being Mizbah, who is a newlywed Pakistani immigrant who comes to America, ends up purchasing a, a hotel, and the other two sets of point of views are set in a more modern day, like our time period situation, with Sal, who is Mizbah's son, and Noor, who is Sal's best friend. Now these two are like thick as thieves until a fight separates them for a few months, and now as Mizbah's health is rapidly declining, the two friends come back together and find that they are both in very different positions in life but still really care about each other. I, I have a full length review of this, just know it's my new favorite. I absolutely adore this book and everything in it. So worth the hype and I need more people reading it like ASAP. But like I said, review will be linked down below because I don't want to get too much into it. This was like the month I just like kind of really leaned into like romances. I don't know why, I think it was just February and I was just like I need, I need. So I decided to go with audiobooks, which like, I'll get into it in a second, but it was a good time. So moving on to the first audiobook that I read this month, and that is The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa. This is an adult romance. It follows two perspectives, one of them being Carolina Santos, who is a wedding planner who has been left at the altar. Her then fiancé sent his brother to send the message. Now said brother is Max who is our second point of view and the two of them find themselves colliding when Carolina is trying to, or Lena I should say, is trying to bring up their, like come up, like bring, like you know, further her wedding planning career and ends up running into them as a project for a marketing development for the hotel that his, that his, that Max's family currently works for. Five out of five stars. This was such a fun read. I genuinely, genuinely enjoyed the two characters and their dynamics and I love the almost like rom-com, the little subtle rom-com aspects in there. It was just a lot of fun to read and listen to and I could easily just get lost in both perspectives. I will say that I didn't expect there to be smut, which is a very like I don't know how I didn't think there was going to be like a ton of smut in this book. But the last thing I expected to hear in the middle of my work day was describing how great his cock looked. Or better yet, the thing is I agree with the statement. In this scene they're like, you know, kind of the girl tells the guy that cunnilingus is an art which I agree with. However, what I did not expect was that it was going to be in Max's perspective, in a deep, gravelly male voice, pitching his voice up to say, Canalingus is an art. It's just instances like that where I'm just like, you know, I shouldn't read, listen to audiobooks of romances. Because it's just, it, it doesn't make me blush, but it takes me out super quickly when like the voice has to pitch itself up, or I'm like trying to do work and the next thing you know they're like, get in fricky, and I'm just like, I, I want to giggle because like having it, like hearing it out just makes you want to laugh. The second book, the second audiobook that I listened to is The Right Swipe by Alicia Ray. This is another um, adult contemporary romance following Rhiannon who is the like a CEO of a major dating company. Like a major dating company that has kind of like Bumble's idea behind it where women make the first move. Um, at an event where she is planning to talk to the owner of a different dating company to purchase it, she finds out that this man is now, the same, Samson, this former NFL player, is now the new face of this dating app. And the two of them have a history where they had a wonderful, like, date, couple sets of dates, they had sex, and then they made plans to, like, see each other outside of this, like, this vacation of theirs, and she gets ghosted. So now it's just them having to work together in this environment and trying to figure out what the heck exactly happened on this faithful day. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. I really did enjoy the book and the plot and the um, how it progressed. My biggest issue was Rhiannon actually. Like I understood her trauma. I, trust me, I get it. I understood her trauma and her problems and of opening up and letting people in. However, my biggest qualm with her was that in regard to her and Samson's relationship, Samson had all of these wonderful things to talk about in terms of how strong Rhiannon is, how intelligent she is, and things that are just outside of their relationship. However, the most Rhiannon could possibly say about Samson was about 
how good how good looking he was how he was in bed and maybe like the things that Samson can do for her and I felt like that balance in the relationship was a little off and I wasn't the biggest fan of it honestly and I felt like some things that Rhiannon did say and while again I understand because she was traumatized was borderline just mean it wasn't even defensive or having your walls up it was just generally mean and I just like it, it just she was just very like not insufferable because that's a little mean but she was just a very difficult character to like and that's saying something because I like a nice unlikable character but she was just very difficult to enjoy on the page so I gave this a three out of five stars I might pick up um other works by Alicia Ray who knows it'll have to be kind of a hit or miss depending on that, what the synopsis says Moving on to the last three books that I read in the month of February. If you all saw me finish this March 2nd, no you didn't. And that is You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria. This is an adult contemporary romance, again, following kind of like a telenovela situation. Jasmine is a well-known, I guess like daytime actress, and when she goes through a messy breakup, she finds herself splattered all over the tabloids and runs to her home in New York with a leading lady plan to help with her love life and help her focus on her career more. There she finds out that her next project is actually a telenovela featuring a full-on Latin Latinx cast and one of them happens to be the leading man of some of the, her and her family's favorite telenovelas, Ashton Suarez. These two end up coming together and they end, it's a, it's a ride, it's such a good ride because when, you know, like they're, sp they're falling in love and their characters are but there's not, not a lot of um, chemistry between the two of them they, uh, they start to practice in private and things ensue I give this a 5 out of 5 stars, this was such a fun and engaging read I love the backdrop of the telenovela that we get to see them work out in, on the page we get to see the scenes actually at, like planned out and how each like episode was going to happen and like the build up to that was perfect because it also paralleled the build up to Ashton and Jasmine. I love the fact that Jasmine was part Filipino and she mentions that she can dance salsa and Tini Kling. Um, there are some trigger warnings with this. I realize that I haven't said the trigger warnings for most of these books. So I will leave those linked in the story graph reviews and my video reviews down below because I missed it. But I love their very slow burn romance. My only qualm with this was that it did finish way too quickly. The book finished way too quickly, not the smut scenes. Those were fine. But it did finish a little too quickly and I wanted to see more of it, like maybe like an extra 50 pages just to wrap it up and flush it out. But I really did enjoy everything that this book had and I cannot wait to pick up sounds like Adios, which is like the second part or spin-off to the Primas of, Primas of Power. It's such a good book and I love all the characters and they just are so great and I cannot wait to continue on in this universe. The next one I thought was going to be a romance but it wasn't as romance heavy as I thought. And that is Once Upon a Sunset by Tiff Marcelo. This is an adult contemporary following Diana Gallagher Carey who is kind of a very well-known um, obstetrician in her, in her practice. That is until one day she makes a very last minute call. And while it was a good call, she ends up finding herself on break to avoid the immediate PR issue that happens right after. Now, while she's on this break, she and her mom are going through her now deceased grandmother's things and finds letters from her grandfather basically saying that he was alive this entire time when the last thing she had heard of them from, you know, their their relative was that he passed away in World War II. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. Again, trigger warnings will be left down below for y'all. It was, it's a very low five. Oh, I also have a full spoiler-free review of this book, so I will leave that link down below so you guys can all see all of the trigger warnings and such. But I enjoyed this book. It definitely took me to a place I didn't think it was going to go. Uh, I thought it was going to be heavy on the romance because Diana and her mom do go back to the Philippines to figure out exactly what happened to her family, but it just shows a lot more about Filipino culture, which I really enjoyed, and a lot of family in general, and just that love and bond between all of them. And it was great. I loved it. I do think that there were so many things that were going on behind the scenes that it did get overshadowed. Like their reactions weren't nearly as grave. Like the big reveal as to what happened between Diana's grandfather and grandmother was kind of overshadowed by the rest of the events. But like I said, I have a full length review that does talk about this topic, this book that is spoiler free. So if you guys want to check that out, I will leave everything linked down below for y'all. So you should just go ahead and check it out. Yeah. And the last book in this very, very long, long wrap-up. It's my longest wrap-up in a while. And that is Dial A for Antis by Jesse Q. Sutanto. This is an adult 
romance, following Madeline Chen, who is part, who is a photographer for her family's wedding planning business. One day, she ends up going on a blind date that her auntie set her up on, and ends up accidentally killing him. Now, the only, the rational thing to do here is to call her family and have them help her figure out what to do with the body. Now, kind of panicking, they shove him in a freezer and set it aside to go finish off the job at the wedding over a wedding that they have over the weekend. Now, now. That freezer gets shipped with them, and now they have to deal with the body while also working on the wedding planning details. I give this a 5 out of 5 stars. This was such a fun rom-com. Like, every possible twist and turn you think could happen, happens. Everything that could go wrong, goes wrong. Like, it was Murphy's Law times 100. And it was so much fun to read. I love reading uh, Medellin's fa Medi's family and her in general and the romance that happened in here. It was just so cute and so fun. And I heard it's becoming a Netflix show, which is perfect because this translates wonderfully on the screen. And there's also going to be a sequel, so I'm excited for that. And that sequel is also going to be picked up for a Netflix movie. So super stoked. I love this book. It's definitely going to be a new favorite of mine. It just, it's exactly what you'd expect from a book with this kind of synopsis. So you will be surprised, but it'll also make sense given the premise of the novel. But that is it for the books that I read in the month of February slash beginning of March, but we round down in these situations. If you guys enjoyed any of these books, let me know in the comments below. If you guys want me to pick up more um, romances, also let me know. I did pick up a couple of romances. I have two more left from my like backlist, I guess. But until next time, hope you guys are having a safe week. Hopefully you're having a wonderful week. It goes up on a Friday. Hope you guys are having a good weekend. But until next time, bye.